Hey folks, Andy Barrar, Handy Andy from HandyAndyMedia.com. Today we're doing a review for Best Buy's blog on these three electric bikes that are all available at Best Buy. Now the first one in the left is an entry level, then we have a mid-level, and then more of a premium price of the three. What makes these special is all three of them are foldable electric bikes. So if you have limited space, you're gonna be able to fold these up and then store them when it's not in use. Are they any good? Well. Let's get into it. So sit back, relax, get your popcorn ready, folks, and cue the intro. So before we talk about the differences, let's talk about some of the similarities between all three of these bikes. And the first similarity is they all have fenders. And when you're buying an electric bike, make sure that it has fenders because you can buy some without them. But that prevents dirt and debris from kicking up and getting you all dirty. Of course, they all have pedals because they are standard bikes, but they're also electric bikes in, as well. So you do have that pedal assist. Now this one, the gyrocopter, super simple to use. You got that power button on the right, and then you basically have a throttle, and it does have your standard kind of brakes. Super simple to use. On the left, you have the toggle for the light, and also a horn on the bottom. So a very simple, if, you're, if, you're, if it's been a while that you rode a bike, this is something that you want to check out. Next, we have the Go Tracks. Now, this is really a step up from the gyrocopters, and you're gonna notice a big difference in performance. It does have that rear wheel suspension, but it also does have a bigger motor at 350 watts compared to the 250 watts of the gyrocopters. You also notice it looks like it has that little handle, and we'll talk a little bit about that when you fold it down. But otherwise, it is very similar to the gyrocopters, except it's just a really step up in terms of the performance. This is where you would charge the battery right on that side. So again, both of them are foldable, but the, the GoTrax does have a better performance. Lastly, we have this one, the Go City, and this one is really uh, a step up between the two because you have that battery pack that is removable and sits uh, just under the seat over there. So this is really more like your typical road bike or mountain bike uh, in terms of just the biking experience and the motor. You got an LCD display that tells you how your speed and distance that you've traveled. Uh, there's a power button there on the battery to turn it on and off, and that's where you would charge it. Again, it is removable, but having that display and, and just this overall, you know, with gears, it just feels like your traditional bike. Now I'm going to fold all three of them, starting with the gyrocopters. And this is the first time you're looking as the first time of me trying to figure out how to fold it. So it is rather intuitive. And then the big test was, you know, can I pick it up and how much does it weigh? I believe this weighs about 37 pounds, which I could carry, but it swings open. And that was a big issue that I had because I wanted to be able to see if I could open and hold it with one hand, but I couldn't. Next, we have the GoTrax, very similar in its design. It folds at the stem and also at the frame. And another test, I wanted to see if I could pick it up. This one's weighing about 44 pounds. And again, I was able to hold it with one hand, but it just wants to swing open. And that's the issue what I found with both of those e-bikes. Lastly, let's try with the Go City. And now I'm starting to get really familiar. You wanna put the, the stem down and then fold the frame down. And this one does have a little stand for making it hold up, but it's the heaviest of the three, weighing a staggering 50 pounds. And you know, still I'm trying to carry it with one hand, but I realize you definitely need two hands and there's really no way to carry it with one hand, both because of the weight and it's just kind of awkward. Now the fun part is test driving all three of them, starting with the gyrocopters. I had this little area where I could film that was kind of closed off. And just as a standard bike, you know, it was really fun, but then you do have that, the, you know, the ability to hit up the motor and go a faster speed. The one thing I noticed about this gyrocopter is it doesn't accelerate very fast, but it does get to a top speed of 25 kilometers. Also getting a top speed of 25 is the go tracks that I'm having here, but I noticed that it does have more of an acceleration to it. It has a similar experience and feel to the gyrocopters, except it's really a step up in that performance. You really can feel that extra 100 watts of motor power just in both the acceleration. Uh, it, it feels like it's going faster than 25 kilometers, but that's just because of the acceleration. Lastly, let's try the Go City. Now this one I was really looking forward to. It has a top speed of 32 kilometers, a 500 watt motor, and boy, look at that. You could really see it. it this thing just pops. It, it feels like a, almost like a little moped in terms of the performance. You just hit that throttle and you could go. 
But you got to remember, it's it's a standard bike as well. So even without the pedal assist, without the motor, it still feels good as a bike because it has your standard gears. So I almost want to say it's like riding a bike. Well, because it is riding a bike. But with that extra power in that motor, I really feel that this could be almost a commuter vehicle for people who like biking, but they have to go a long distance. With that motor and that power, you're going to have no problems uh, getting from point A to point B. So between all these three bikes, I have to say I really do like the Ghost City. That was my favorite, but it's come no surprise because that is the premium version. The Go Tracks, I actually did very much enjoy this one. If I had to choose between that one and the gyrocopters, like this one right here, I would go with the Go Tracks. I think that step up in performance is worth the extra money that you would have to pay. But this one, you know, if you're just an entry level person, maybe an elderly person, you just want a bike, uh, you're going to be happy with the gyrocopters as well. So I guess the moral of the story is if you want an electric bike and you have limited space, these new foldable electric bikes are very, very interesting. The only issue that I'm having right now is when they're folded, you can't hold it with one hand. They kind of want to open up. Hopefully they can work on that in the future, make better designs. Uh, but it just shows you that we are really moving towards electric transportation uh, in the near future. And these become little commuter vehicles, both for leisure and transportation to get you to and from work. Uh, you'll see the scratch right here. Well, that's a, that's one of the problems with these uh, foldable electric bikes. They're gonna scratch up. So just be mindful of that if you're gonna be purchasing them. You're, you're not gonna be able to keep them pristine if you're folding them and opening them back up all the time. Well, folks, that's all we have for today. If you like this review, please smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, and leave your comments below. You can find more information about me on my website, handyandymedia.com. Once again, my name is Andy Barrar, Handy Andy, signing out. We'll see you again next time.